now, and now, the Kill or Be Killed podcast with Damien Ross, founder and master instructor of the Self Defense Company. Hey, this is Damien Ross with the Self Defense Company here with my good friend George Hutchins on the Kill or Be Killed podcast. How you doing today, Georgie? Not too bad. How's it going, my man? Good, really good. So we got a couple emails, and we like to do this from time to time, and we're just going to go through and read them for you guys. Some, some, uh, some of some of our members, some people in the programs. Um, okay, great. So the first one's from Doug. Uh, he purchased sixty minutes self defense. He says, "I watched it and loved it. I view it and reviewed it several times. It's very good. I personally would not step back to finger dart. Just me, but the material is great." Okay, Doug, I, I understand where you're coming from, but you got to understand the purpose of the finger dart and the whip kick and the primary escape and evasion tactics of 60 Minutes Self Defense. Um, it's all about managing your body weight and getting the most out of the least amount of contact as possible. So that finger dart, when you when you whip that out, it's not meant to like poke someone's eyes out. It's just meant to stop them in their tracks so you can maybe escape, you know, grab your pepper spray, grab your firearm, uh, and, or, or just again, escape and get the hell away. So as soon as we start moving in, the finger dart is not what we're going to use. We're going to use like a heel of hand, we're going to use the edge of hand, stuff that's really designed to move in and take ground. But again, when you start moving in and taking ground, you know, that requires more training. It requires, you know, more confidence, more power and more aggressiveness. So that finger dart is the least amount of contact I can have with the most amount of effectiveness, if you will. Right? Um, yeah, and, and I just want to kind of jump in here for a moment, sure. too. And, I mean, what I like about the finger dart and think about watching a baseball game right now, you know, and fans are in the stand, guys up to bat, swings the bat, the bat goes flying. What's the initial reaction of those people in the stands? It's always that flinch reaction, <laughs> hands come up to block. And that's what the finger dart essentially is. It's a, it's a reaction, it's a flinch reaction but when you're doing that reaction you're utilizing something that is going to give you a defensive advantage as opposed to just covering up you're striking at the same time so it's a it's a great program it's a great tool to use and you know it's we're talking about escape and evasion here we're not talking about taking ground at this point this is our initial reaction hey and even if you know you're you're somewhat caught off guard and you flick that out and you get that little flinch reaction, it's the, you don't have to wind up, you can't, you don't have any time, you just want to get something out there, a flick, a spit, I don't know, you know, something, it's, yep. it's the fastest thing you can throw out there without using any other type of weapon or any other type of tool. So right. the finger dart is not meant to like inflict damage, it's meant, it's a disruptor, and it's meant to just stop them, pause them, and then allow you to, you know, uh, to respond accordingly as opposed to, you know, trying to automatically attack them. And I think the biggest problem we have with, you know, typical self-defense and martial arts training, okay, you're always trying to destroy your attacker. Well, not really. I mean, for most parts, you're just, you're just training to survive, just training to survive. And that means to stop, change the momentum, change his mindset, and then, and then keep, and then keep moving, keep moving away. That's it. Just keep rolling. So that is really um, – okay, good. We're good. I thought for a second we weren't recording. I would have blown my brains out. So anyway, um, so, you know, that just enables us to, you know, again, stop the momentum, shift the momentum, stop their mindset, and give you a second to figure some, you know, figure out what you're going to do next in that split second. Exactly. Okay. So I got another uh, – this one's from John M., I was in the store and this big fella, I mean tall and big like, I don't know, just someone who has to duck under a door frame and has arms tattooed with, well, anyway, I felt afraid of him as his calloused hands accepted the change at the counter. I don't know. I'm just asking. My side of hand can't reach his face, LOL. And he is a mean man, mean. I probably don't know the answers because of your teachings and my own life, but man, what would you do, Damien, if this big fellow wanted his wanted his wallet? Love everything you do, bro. All right. So, <laughs> what do you say about tattoos? <laughs> right, right, right. So, 
That's awesome. So, but yeah, I mean, okay. So your worst nightmare were, walks in and we got a lot of things. We got a couple of things to talk about first. Um, all right. Is this guy, so let's change your mindset. Is this person trying to come into your home, rape your wife, you know, kill your children? So what's, what's happening here? Right. So look at it from that perspective. Okay. This person wants to fucking kill me. All right. He wants to do harm to my family. He wants to do the things that worst imaginable to my wife. And immediately, immediately we are, um, uh, put in a position where we think we got to go mano we mano with this fucking guy. You know, I mean, I got another email from somebody like I got 60 minutes self defense and you know, what happens if, you know, a guy attacks me with a hammer? I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell you right now, the answer in 60 minutes self defense is right there. And it's this whole fucking thing. This is pepper spray. Okay. And if you got a big son of a bitch who's coming at you, first of all, why do you want to, you know, why do you want to, you know, go mano in mano with him if you don't, if you don't have to, right? You know better. So even if you, you know, you juice him, even if you don't have pepper spray, you know, you're not, it's illegal. You carry bug spray, you carry something in a small size that's going to be an irritant and cause him to pause and stop his momentum. And then I don't know. So maybe you don't have pepper spray. Maybe you got a push dagger. Maybe you got, you know, an edged weapon. Maybe you got a blackjack. Maybe you got brass knuckles. Maybe you got, I don't know, something to help you survive. So it doesn't have to be a firearm, but God damn it. Get your mind out of the freaking dojo. So, you know, again, we can talk about biting. We talk about gouging. We talk about edge of hand. You can go at this son of a bitch. You can pick up the things around you that would stop him. Don't have pepper spray. Holy shit. Well, I don't know. Maybe I run and grab a fire extinguisher. Maybe I throw crap out the counter at him. Maybe I hit him with a bowling ball. I don't know. So when we train... A little this, rock and a sock. <laughs> right. When we train in the self-defense system, training system, we're using everything at our disposal. Everything. And we're going to even the playing field. And this is why training and preparation is important. For that guy. That's the only guy I think about, by the way. I don't think about the people that I can just talk to. I think about the guy with the calloused hands and the cauliflower ears that's got a duck going into a doorway. And believe me, dude, I am 5'8 on a good day. Okay? I am not a tall person. So, and I have been in tussles with people who are a lot taller and bigger than me because, yeah, that's the way the world is built. And, you know big people you know, sometimes get into short people and short people do have an advantage of getting in range on somebody and getting inside on somebody. So that's the other advantage, but yeah, this is a big person. And yeah, if you think I'm grappling somebody without a little nasty bit of surprise waiting for him, you're out of your mind. Okay. This is kill or be killed life or death, right? This is someone who is trying to hurt you and you are in fear for your life. Okay, you want some magic, you know, whoop de doo move? No, but, you know, practice training with this. Use it in the system. Holy shit, module 11. Okay, module 9. All right, practice. Module 1, 60 minutes self-defense. Module 5, all right? Use it. Don't underestimate the power of this. I carry this. This is the one I carry. If I'm out with my kids and some psycho wants to do something, my kids leave and I fucking juice them. That's it. I'm not wasting around. I'm not, it's not about, you know, how many moves I can get for a dollar. You know, it's like, you know, you want to just get the hell out of there, survive at all costs and by whatever means necessary. And the other thing, and then I'll shut up, is like, is that you're not going to sit there and be like, okay, get into a fight. All right posture and all that crap. The first thing we teach you is what? Tell somebody you don't want a problem. You don't want to fight. They put their hands up. No, dude, no, no, no. I don't want to fight. I'm good. Come on, let's talk about it. And then when they put their fucking hand, their hands down, then you, you know, do what you got to do. You know, Fairburn said something, then Carl is me as well, you know, vehemence and artifice, which means basically yeah. fancy words for be as ruthless as possible and 
lie your ass off. All right? There's never a problem. You never want to fight, but you're always gaining the position of, of advantage, and you're always having something that gives you the edge. Okay? If you don't think we're, you know, not, you know, firearms are part of all this stuff. You know? Flashlights, bang. You know, I mean, tactical flashlights, blackjack, pepper spray, brass knucks. Uh, edge weapons, all you know, concealed all over various parts of your body, all right, for different reasons. As you learn, in you know, you see it in module three, you'll see it in module nine, all right. So, you know, don't think of this as okay. Well, you know, I'm just training. You know, we train on the training dummies. They hit the training dummies. We also stab them, choke them, garrot them, bludgeon them, and do all kinds of crap to them. Because you need to understand, you train, and you need to understand, you know, how impact weapons work, how pepper spray works, and again. Uh, you know, how edge weapons work and how to use them because everything in the world is a projectile weapon, an impact weapon, or an edge weapon. This is a projectile weapon. So is this. Okay. So, you know, I want you, you know, to think, you know, outside of the training room and outside the hand to hand. All right. I don't give a shit. Okay. Your life is in danger. You do whatever you need to be done. And that's it. Okay. And, and you know what, and that's exactly what we talk about with our training. Train for that level 10. You're, you know, that level 10, kill or be killed. Holy fuck, you know, this person wants to end my life. You know, I just want to address the second part of his comment of, well, what would you do if somebody wants your wallet? And, you know, <clears throat> let's be real. If somebody wants your wallet, you should fucking give it to them. At the end of the day, shit can be replaced. And, you know, and I tell my women this all the time. But what I say to my women is, you know what? Don't carry your driver's license. Don't carry here in Canada our health card. It has our address. Our driver's license has our address. Our you know PALS, which is our position acquisition license for firearms, has our address. Anything that has your address on it, just don't carry it in your wallet because you don't want to be thinking after the fact that you gave somebody your wallet. Holy shit, they you know have my house. They have my home address. They could show up at my door. Uh, some things are just not worth fighting for. But, I mean, if somebody wants to move you from point A to point B, take you from fucking crime scene A to crime scene B, or your life is in danger, yeah, then they? absolutely, what you were talking about, 100% level 10 response. Right. Crime scene 2 is where they find your body. You know, yep. so, you know, you need to decide right now, you know, what's worth fighting over. What's worth dying for? That's really it. What's yep. worth dying for? And if it is your wallet, okay, that's your decision. You know, I'm not going to, you know, you know, that's up to you. All right. But it's life or death. Okay. You're not scolding a child who is going to use violence to get what they want. Okay. You're not going to teach them a lesson. Don't be a fucking moron. All right. These are violent people who use violence as a means to get what they want. So they use it. You don't. Okay. As a ge general, unless you're in that business, you know, unless you're in, you know, something that requires you to use violence on a daily basis, you are not in that business. Okay. You are a human being trying to get from point A to point B, live a healthy, happy, safe life. All right. So it's not to you to, you know, reprimand. And even the guys that impose their will over people for a living, start off at level 10 and back down as needed, if needed. But you don't go in. I mean, this escalation, this circle of tr force, whatever the hell it is, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm like, I, you know, I've seen it, you know, the ladder, I've seen the circle, I've seen, look, you come in as a lion and then you can throttle down if you need be. You'll be able to tell. You'll be able to tell. And again, especially if your life involves using violence or use of force. You know, if you're a civilian who, you know, are just looking to protect themselves, what do you give a shit? Your life's in danger. And then just go to the get out of jail blueprint, blueprint uh, in the uh, in the elite section, and then you'll see what to do next because we outline it for you. So you know, I, I think, and the last thing that I kind of want to say about this is, you know, we're training to avoid these situations, to deal with these situations. The training that these people have, these street fucking criminals have, is real world violent experience. I mean, who do you think truly has the advantage in? That world, and this is why we have to train at that level ten, and why we have to think at a level ten and have the mindset of a level ten. And like you said, dial that volume, that violence volume down, you know, during that altercation if need be. I mean, the hardest thing we have to do as instructors is to take normal people who don't want to hurt anybody 
And because neither do we. I mean, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm like, you know, I think the thought of violence really upsets me, you know, but, you know, we need to just train people. This is the hardest thing to flip that switch, to take that step, to use force, and then just to get to a dark place where they're going as hard as they possibly can um, and willing to do whatever they, they, they can. And that includes all the little toys I'm pulling up today. So, you know, that is what the training system is all about. That is what real self-defense is all about. It's about doing whatever is necessary by whatever means necessary. If it means lying, it means lying. If it means, um, you know, using, you know, tools, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I think uh, Musashi is one of my I love Miyamoto Musashi. I read Book of, I mean, Book of Five Rings. I mean, it's awesome. And if you really study him, he was one ruthless son of a bitch. All right. He like a fair, there's no such thing as a fair fight. As soon as you have a, as soon as I think you have a problem with me, I'm going to take advantage of whatever's necessary. I'm going to take you out of your game. I'm going to ambush you. You know, I'm not going to wait for you to draw your sword. His thing is like, it's most regrettable to die with a sword still in its sheath. So fuck you. There's no such thing as a sucker punch, people. It doesn't exist. All right. If somebody's got a problem with you, that's it. You got to deal with it whatever way is necessary. And if you're not willing to do it right then, you got to leave. You got to leave. So anyway, <clears throat> okay, finally, last one. It's not really just, it's just kind of a, a viewer comment. Uh, dear Mr. Ross, I purchased your entire self uh, uh SDTS course. Uh, it is an excellent sequence format and info. A truly down and dirty form of self-defense. If the trainee is satisfactorily, you know, going to PT shape, motivated, your training is easily learned. A superior product. Well done, sir. Since 1990, I've owned and been uh, the, a private investigator for PowerSec. Uh, we provide specialized pistol training for PSD agents, teams, and law enforcement officers working in high-threat environments. In 2002 to 05, I was employed by the U.S. Department of Defense as a contractor on a PSD team working out of the U.S. Consulate in Jerusalem, Israel. I was the unit's primary pistol instructor. Combatives has always been a great part of interest. Several of my good buds trained with Carl Sestari and Charlie Nelson. I was in contact with both times over the years. Best to you, Mr. Ross, Robert E. Fody, Parsec. Thanks, Rob. Um, I, uh, yeah, I really, you know, I, I hardly share a lot of these. Sometimes we just post them and put them out there because, you know, compliments. I'm like, all right, you know, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're an elite member. Um, I'm glad you found us. Um, it's, you know, it's, some, you know, it's like to say, if people don't choose the self-defense company because uh, we're different, they choose us because they are, you know, so, you know, we've got um, a distinguished, you know, set of instructors and members. And our biggest problem is that, uh, you know, most of the people that find us deal with violence and they understand what we, how we roll and what we do. And, which is a problem because most people don't deal with violence or haven't really reflected on what happens when their life is in danger and when they're, you know, when they, when they have to use, you know, uh, use force. So, you know, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, thank you again. We're humbled, uh, from, uh, by your thoughts. Um, and that's it, George, uh, anything, uh, anything to add, buddy? No, I mean, that's, it's just awesome to hear that kind of feedback from people, you know, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I found the, you know, the self-defense company in 2011, and I haven't looked back. I've studied, you know, combatants for a lot of years. You know, there's some great instructors that are, that are out there, but they're few and far between. And that's what I really love about kind of what we hear, you know, we, we didn't create this guys. Like we didn't invent combatants. We didn't invent the techniques we didn't invent the concepts we're putting it together in a way that in my opinion is the easiest to follow and is the easiest way to learn because we cover all different methods of learning whether you're visual auditory kinesthetic it, it, it doesn't matter right we we cover it all so that's really what i just kind of wanted to close with all right Excellent. Okay, George, thank you very much. And everybody else, thanks for joining us. This is Damien Ross and George Hutchings from the Self-Defense Company. Until next time.